The last time I actively used Windows was a Windows 10 laptop. The last time I had a Windows desktop was 8.1. There was a period in there where I made use of a Mac. We don't talk about that time. Now, every time I see Windows pass by my vision, I am oh so happy that I'm making use of Linux. Whether it be the initial Windows 11 drama with TPM and the minimum system requirements, whether it be the introduction of Copilot into Windows, whether it be whatever happened back in the Windows 8 days, or what people are recently angry about, more ads being integrated into Windows. So you may have seen this article from The Verge making the rounds. Microsoft starts testing ads in the Windows 11 start menu. The app recommendations from Windows 10 are coming to Windows 11 soon. So this is not the first time that Microsoft has done this. Now, as a Windows 11 user, you too get to enjoy the great feature of having ads in your start menu. At least these kinds of ads, because there is a lot more to come. So this was added in 22635.3495 beta channel, which I love the way Microsoft does release numbers. They are very clear and I know exactly what they mean. Now, Microsoft cares so little about this being a controversial addition that in this blog post, it is the first feature listed. Feature in air quotes. Changes and improvements gradually being rolled out to the beta channel with Toggle On. Start menu. Building on top of recent improvements like grouping recently installed apps, which sounds useful, and showing your frequently used apps, which also sounds pretty useful. We are now trying out recommendations to help you discover great apps from the Microsoft Store under recommended on the start menu. This will only appear for Windows insiders in the beta channel in the US and will not apply to commercial devices, so devices managed by an organization. This is how it's going to look. Now, the red box is here just for demonstration purposes. When you're actually using it, it is not going to be there. So here we have all of the regular things that you actually have on your system. And then we have an ad. This is an ad for 1Password, the password manager, and the red box needs to be there because this doesn't look like an ad otherwise. It's just there as if it's an application you have on your system. So you're going to click on it and then it's going to prompt you to install it. That is not something your operating system should be doing. I really hope that with the addition of more and more and more ads into Windows, ads that are not being disclosed, like this one right here, which looks like a regular thing on your system, I hope there is a lawsuit about this because, look, think about it in the YouTube context, right? If I do a video that is paid for by an advertiser, I need to disclose this. I need to say, hey, this is an ad, who it's by, so on and so forth. Microsoft can have an operating system with ads all over it and don't need to mention a single one of them. Now, to be fair in this case, this can be turned off by going to settings, personalization, start, and turning off the toggle for show recommendations for tips, app promotions, and more. The problem isn't that you can turn it off. That's fine. Also, for now, you can turn it off. The problem isn't that you can turn it off. The problem is it's enabled by default and that it exists in the first place. Because there are a lot of people out there who don't read blog posts like this, who don't watch videos on Windows, who don't watch videos on really anything tech related, who have absolutely no idea that stuff like this is being added. Those are the people that things like this really target and really harm. Now, where it gets really funny is when you want to do a video on ads in Windows, it's not just as simple as looking up Windows ads, because there are so many instances that I just didn't know about of Microsoft adding ads into Windows, and in some cases, it's so common now that nobody even talks about the fact that it's still happening. For example, here is an article from March 22nd, 2023. There's no stopping Windows 11 start menu ads now. This is a different set of start menu ads than the ones that we were just talking about. <laughs> this is not even the same sort of app recommendations. 
This was about the public release of an earlier beta feature discussed in November 8th, 2022. Ads invade the Windows 11 start menu. Users of the beta channel notice something a little bit weird in their start menu. In that menu where it shows lock, sign out, change account settings, it also had an extra entry now. This one, back up your files. This would automatically try to back up your files using OneDrive. And if you didn't have OneDrive set up, it would prompt you to set up OneDrive. But, <laughs> This is where it gets really dumb. It wasn't a static setting. It sometimes changed to sign up for a Microsoft account. Sometimes complete your profile. And they were very subtle with how they wrote about it in the blog post at the time. We are trying out a small change to the start menu where some insiders will see badging on their user profile, notifying them that certain actions need to be taken. Need to be taken. Do they need to be taken? No, you don't have to take them whatsoever. It's just always going to have it there saying, hey, sign up for a Microsoft account. Hey, back up your files using OneDrive. Then you had cases like this, where they injected ads into your file manager, write with confidence across documents, email, and the web with advanced writing suggestions from Microsoft Editor. Now... Microsoft, like most companies do when they release something which got quite a bit of public backlash, said, This was an experimental banner that was not intended to be published externally and was turned off. It was not intended to be published externally, but you did make it. So, you know, it was eventually probably going to be released externally. And who remembers the uh, ads for Edge when you wanted to switch away from Edge? Before you switch, try Microsoft Edge. It's fast, secure, and built for Windows 11. Check it out. Edge is literally a Chromium-based browser. In this case, they're swapping from the Chromium-based browser to the Chromium-based browser. This one just happens to be rainbow. The other one happens to be blue and green. They're the same application under the hood. It literally doesn't matter. You know you don't like Edge. You don't need an ad for Edge if you're swapping away from Edge. Or how about this one, where garbage news and basically mobile games were being advertised all over the operating system. Why does this need to be here on an operating system? The answer is it doesn't. At the time, this could only be partially disabled. You could get rid of the news, but you couldn't get rid of the widgets that you just don't want to be seeing. I believe since then they have modified it to make it so both are removable. But again, why does it need to be removed? Why does it exist in the first place? There are so many cases of ads being injected into Windows that <laughs> you can make a tier list of ads being added into Windows. Now, this one was from 2016. And since then, it has only gotten worse. So we have things like lock screen ads, start menu ads. Oh, there were already start menu ads back then. There were different start menu ads from the start menu ads we're seeing now. Get Office and Skype ads. <laughs> Literal pop-up ads asking you to buy something. Cortana loves Bing. Branding. But wait, there's more. Upgrading Solitaire to the premium version of Solitaire with a subscription fee. <laughs> a subscription fee for Solitaire. Windows is such a good operating system and it's totally not getting worse every single year. You know what? I'm kind of buying into what people are saying about Windows 7 being the last good version of Windows because it really has just gone very downhill since then, hasn't it? It is important to never forget that this sort of stuff, having ads all over your operating system, just constantly demanding that you don't swap from one application to another, all of this stuff is what we used to see in like sketchy, malicious, kind of malicious third party applications that you downloaded from some third party site without realizing it or it was bundled with another application. 
this is not stuff that should be in the operating system level. This is dedicated to the scammers. Somehow Microsoft is now at that level again. Most of this stuff can be disabled, whether it be through normal settings or registry edits. The problem is not that it can be disabled, it's that it's enabled by default and that you have to go and disable it in the first place. It does not need to be here. There are other ways to run an operating system. I am not even talking about the data collection that Windows does. That is a whole separate matter that I also have an issue with. You can do the data collection and it can still be a problem separate from the ads. The ads don't need to be here. There is no justification for them outside of just injecting ads because money. Now, every time something bad about Windows happens, you'll get posts like this. It looks like we'll soon be welcoming a whole lot of new Linux users here. And over on PC Master Race, it was a very similar sentiment. People being like, hey, Windows sucks nowadays. Maybe I'll try out Linux. Hmm, Linux seems pretty cool. Maybe it's worth giving a shot. Oh, I used Linux a long time ago. Maybe I'll give it another shot now. Along with the Linux users saying, hey, try out this distro, try out that distro. Here are things that you thought didn't work. They actually do work. You might have to do this. And actually, in some cases, it just works out of the box now. What people always tend to forget, though, is people on subreddits like this, on blog posts, on videos, they are the 1% of 1% dedicated users. This has 680 comments. This one has 334. Together, it's about 1,000 comments. Windows has a lot of users. Way, way more than that. The people who are getting involved in threads like this who say, I'm going to try out Linux, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm sure they will, and in many cases, they might have a good experience. But the people you need to actually be worried about are your parents who just don't know what Windows is. They buy a computer and it has a version of Windows on it. They don't upgrade the operating system. They upgrade the operating system when they buy a new computer. And maybe it's not your parents. Maybe your parents are technically minded. But everybody has people in their life who have no idea how computers work. And those are the people being most affected. The point I'm making is don't get too excited when you see Windows being absolutely garbage. The enshittification of Windows. Because you're not going to see a mass migration of Windows users. It didn't happen when Windows 7 died. It's not going to happen when Windows 10 dies. It's not going to happen when Windows 11 dies. Because most people out there don't even know what a computer is. They know they type things into the thing and it does things. There are people out there that think the monitor is the computer. And I'm not talking about having an all-in-one. They just don't know the distinction between the box and the monitor. It's just a thing they use to access their Facebook and access their emails and maybe use some tool they need for work. And that's as far as it goes. But to those people out there who know what they're doing, who've built their own computer, or at a bare minimum, upgraded from one version of Windows to the next version, who are now trying out Linux for the first time, or trying it out again after using it many years ago, or maybe daily driving it after having a Windows and Linux system dual boot available, Welcome, but let me know, do you still make use of Windows, whether it be for a job or you actually like Windows? I don't believe you if you like Windows, I think you might like some software you run on Windows, not the operating system itself, but if you actually do, prove me wrong, I would like to hear it. So if you liked the video, go like the video, and if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Pay, linked in the description down below. That is going to be it for me and Windows, more like wind blows.